Most people familiar with Culver's know it serves up tasty food and decadent desserts. But there's probably plenty you don't know about this fast food restaurant known for its concrete mixers and oh-so-craveable butter burgers. Here's everything you need to know about the chain that started in America's Dairyland. Survey says Culver's is the nation's third favorite QSR, behind only Chick-fil-A and Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Wait, what survey? And what's a QSR? QSR means Quick Service Restaurant, which is a fancy restaurant industry way of saying fast food joint. As for the survey, it was published in December 2018 by Restaurant Business and reports data collected from more than 100,000 customers during the previous year. Customers were asked to rate top-selling nationwide and regional chain restaurants on five different categories. Service slash hospitality, ambience slash appearance, food slash beverage, takeout slash convenience, and value. A different restaurant business report broke that same survey data down by category, singling out Culver's as the top burger chain. The second-ranked burger chain was in and out which beat Culver's out in value but was found to be less convenient and to have food that wasn't quite as good since, you know, Wisconsin dairy products just make everything better. Restaurant businesses' consumer data represents overall customer experience, but the company also compiled a list of the top 500 restaurant chains in the United States based solely on sales figures. Not surprisingly, the chains with the highest overall sales volume were all the usual suspects, with McDonald's, Starbucks and Subway taking the top three spots. Culver's came in at number 40 overall, with 2018 sales totaling nearly $1.6 billion, as opposed to $38.5 billion for top top-selling Mickey D's. Where Culver's deserves kudos, though, is for not only posting overall 2018 growth in units sold as well as sales, but for the fact that it was the ninth overall burger chain in sales, beating out favorites like In-N-Out and White Castle. What's more, Culver's was miles ahead of the next custard-selling chain, Freddy's Frozen Custard and Steak Burgers, which came in at number 87. Custard-wise, it's Culver's for the win. The original Butterburger, whose name alone inspired Craig Culver's own creation, was in fact quite a bit different from the Butterburger we know and love today. The Wisconsin Butterburger dates back to 1936, more than 50 years before Culver's ever made them a household name. It was created by Sully's Coffee Shop, a restaurant which is still doing business as Sully's Grill and is still serving up their butter-heavy version. The type of butter burger made by Sully's is served on a dry toasted bun and topped with stewed onions and a dollop of butter that melts even as you're eating it. Guilty pleasure? Absolutely. The Culver's Butter Burger, on the other hand, is not, quote, cooked, marinated, dunked, fried or drizzled with butter, though that doesn't sound so bad. Instead, the top of the bun is lightly buttered before the burger is served, and it's done that way because this is how Craig's mom used to make her burgers. Although Culver's think their original Butter Burger is good enough to stand on its own, you can actually get them served in a wide variety of ways, including topped with such adornments as cheese, mushrooms, onions, cheese, bacon and yet more cheese. Yum, cheese. Mega chain Starbucks usually gets the credit or blame, depending on who you're talking to, for starting the trend of putting pumpkin into things nature never intended. Pumpkin spice latte. High five it. But it turns out that Culver's was actually doing pumpkin way back when Starbucks was still in its infancy. In fact, Culver's was making this full flavor fave over a decade and a half before Starbucks started purveying pumpkin spice lattes to the masses in 2003. The Butterburger chain actually started adding pumpkin to their frozen custard back in 1986, and Craig Culver likes to say they were the first on the pumpkin train to Trentown. One thing's for sure, Culver's at least has been using real fresh pumpkin in their custard from the get-go, while it wasn't until 2015 that Starbucks finally gave into media pressure and put a little actual pumpkin puree in their pumpkin spiced latte recipe. Culver's sales figures and popularity make it an attractive opportunity for would-be franchisees. Forbes lists Culver's as number two on its list of best high-investment franchises for 2018, and it also made Franchise Business Review's unranked top 30 list of 2018's best food franchises to buy. 
Sounds like a no-brainer. At least if you happen to have an extra $3,347,500 lying around, as this is what Forbes calculates to be the midpoint initial investment. Oh, you do have that kind of cash? Still, not so fast there. It takes more than just money to make it as a Culver's franchise owner. Back in 1987, Culver's opened its very first franchise and the experience was not so good. But as co-founder Craig Culver said, quote, you learn something from mistakes. And this failure taught him to develop what a rigid system for their franchisees to work within. Under this system, prospective franchise owners must first spend a week working at a Culver's restaurant where they perform and are graded on every single role. Only if they perform well enough will they then be invited to spend four months in the small town of Prairie du Sac, Wisconsin, for a training program from which they must graduate. Oh, and don't forget the minor details like selecting a site, building a restaurant, hiring employees, and all that other stuff. So no, not easy, but still a pretty sweet gig if you can swing it. While Culver's website gives as their reasons for expansion into southeastern and southwestern states the facts that balmy beaches and shady palm trees go well with frozen custard and, quote, desert lands call for cool, freshing desserts, the real cause for their southeastern expansion may have more to do with targeting a certain demographic, the seasonally migrating Midwestern snowbird. When asked about the company expanding its Florida franchising opportunities in 2014, Director of Public Relations and Communications Paul Pittas had this to say. There's a lot of transplant Midwesterners and snowbirds who know us well down there. My parents are moving to Florida! Are you kidding? Can you believe it? It's happening! It's finally happening! I'm free! Jeff Legel, owner of a Culver franchisee group, similarly explained the expansion. We had a lot of Midwest people familiar with Culver's, and where do they go in the wintertime? They go to Arizona and Florida. Whatever the rationale behind it, Culver's targeted expansion seems to have been very successful. Arizona and Florida are the leading non-Midwestern Culver's states, with more on the way. With its cheese, custard, and of course the butter that makes the butter burgers, well, butter burgers, Culver's is more than a dairy queen. It's a dairy emperor. As it turns out, dairy has been the Culver family business for many a generation. The Culver restaurant chain was originally started not only by current chairman Craig Culver and his wife Leah, but also by Culver's dad George and his mum Ruth. Before getting into the restaurant biz, George had worked for the Wisconsin Dairies Cooperative as an inspector and grader of dairy farms, so obviously he he was a man who knew a quality dairy product when he tasted one. George himself had actually had dairy in his blood prior to embarking on his career as a dairy inspector. His own father, Craig's grandpa, had been a cheesemaker. What's more, the cheesemaker's father had been a Wisconsin farmer. What type of farmer, Culver's history fails to specify, but we're going to assume cows were involved because, you know, Wisconsin. Plus, it just makes for a more moving story. See what we did there? It turns out the Butterburger has an interesting connection to a classic TV show. Craig Culver was chatting with an old college buddy of his about drive-in restaurants, and his friend mentioned the best burger he'd ever eaten, called a Butterburger, from a now-closed drive-in in Milwaukee called the Milky Way. That was just enough inspiration to get Culver's wheels spinning on what would eventually become the chain's menu staple. But Culver's Butterburger isn't the only thing the Milky Way inspired. It turns out this diner may have been a teen hangout of a local boy, Tom Miller, who would later become co-creator and producer of the TV show Happy Days. The Happy Days gang spent a lot of time hanging out at a restaurant called Arnold's, whose exterior was modeled after the old Milky Way. So there you have it, a link between Wisconsin's favorite burger chain and the TV show that made Milwaukee famous. You mean this could really be big? Sure, bigger than hamburgers, Al. We're talking about factories, franchises, New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> Every once in a while, in the fry basket at Culver's when two cheese curds love each other very much, well, they might stick together and form a double-sided cheese curd that comes out in the shape of a heart. Culver's suggests you can pull these apart like a very gooey wishbone, and of course, they're an excellent excuse to hit up Culver's on Valentine's Day. There are a few more reasons to love Culver's curds, no matter what shape they're in. For one thing, they come from a very specific supplier, the family-owned and operated La Granda Hillside Dairy in Stanley, Wisconsin and are provided exclusively to Culver's. For another, if you're into sharing the love with Culver's kitchen workers, cheese curds are reputed to be the quickest and easiest thing on the menu for them to make. 
few years back, Culver's was not performing too well in one area, employee relations. They made at least one list of America's worst restaurants from the standpoint of places to work. And the 2012 Diner's Guide put together by Restaurant Opportunities Centers United gave Culver's their lowest grade of zero for paying a livable wage, considered to be $9 an hour, which Culver's didn't meet, providing paid sick days, which they didn't do, and offering opportunities for advancement. Culver's did not meet their minimum standard of 50% promotion. By the time the 2014 Diner's Guide came out, Culver's had, well, it's hard to tell for sure when all categories are marked either does not meet criterion or declined to answer, but it's not the best look, is it? In 2017, things had evidently started to turn around. Business Insider found, with the aid of Glassdoor data, that Culver's ranked as the sixth best fast food company to work for. Glassdoor ratings had become largely positive by June 2019, with a 3.6 rating and comments such as, quote, good job, good company, it felt like family, and very good hours and decent pay. Indeed.com reviewers gave Culver's 3.7 out of 5 stars, so it seems things may really be looking up for Culver's crew members. Even though Culver's has expanded into many, many other states, they've never forgotten their Wisconsin roots. In fact, they are known for using Wisconsin sourced ingredients whenever possible. That includes beef from Midwest raised cows, butter from a local creamery, milk for the custard from local cows, and cheese from Wisconsin dairies. Culver's even launched a Help Us Support Wisconsin Dairy Farmers campaign, which led them to supplying care packages to 800 dairy farmers nominated by customers. These care packages, aka Culver's gift cards, were probably greatly appreciated in these days of declining dairy prices. It's really neat that Culver's are, are aware of the situation that the dairy farmers are in. Another thing Culver's has done to show some love for its home state is to introduce burgers named for and or highlighting its products and roots. 2017's limited-time Wisconsin Big Cheese Pub Burger came complete with a whole lot of cheese, American, cheddar, and Havarti, to be exact. In 2018, Culver's upped the ante with its Oktoberfest-inspired Pretzel Howls Pub Burger, a nod to Wisconsin's German roots. This burger must have been as amazing as it sounds, since it won a Menu Masters Award for showcasing home state products. You should never forget where you came from, and Culver's? They make sure no one ever forgets gets what it is that made them who they are. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite restaurants are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.